middle of your Adriana vineyard, the Catena Adriana vineyard, and this is where you get white bones. Exactly. Why this do you call it white bones? <laughs> well, you know, the, um, I explained you before the, um, the limestone rocks that mm -hmm. we have in the mountains that were formed by the shell of the animals living in the ocean mm -hmm. before the Andes were elevated. So, in honor to these animals, the shells, so we call the wines white bones. So this would be the kind of old maritime kind of shells exactly. which create a kind of like a graveyard of... Exactly, exactly. So basically in, in, in this small parcel where we take the fruit for uh, white bones, we have a, a layer of sand mm -hmm. that is, was deposited more recently uh, by the wind, mm -hmm. so it's mostly aeolic, and then we have the limestone. This is the limestone, which is a, a you see, it's kind of very light in color, uh -huh. like white. Uh, has a lot of calcium carbonate, basically, deposited over over sand and some stones, and and this is what give the special character to white bone chardonnay. Super. So you will see, you will taste now the the very special flavor, the minerality and the nice acidity delivered by this uh, microclima in this specific type of soil. Super. Well, should we try the wine? Of course. And so when was it that Katena separated these different lots? Does this, is this a long process to try and discover yeah. the soil types? Yes, it was, a, it was a long process. We started around 2003 mm -hmm. uh, and it was with, with Laura Katena and Alejandro Vigil uh, you see the hills mm -hmm. on the other side and um, we used to climb those hills and from the top you see the different colors in the vineyard you know some parts more green some light green and some yellow parts and we started to taste the grapes mm -hmm. and they taste different uh, and then we started to make different wines from every parcel like micro vinification mm -hmm. over the years and we found differences that we think are uh, interesting to show and it's where we found uh, white bones in this particular limestone soil and as you will see then white stones and so how would you i mean what is it that chardonnay is obviously a, a very expressive variety um, mm -hmm. and it shows very well the different soil types yes doesn't it how would you describe Chardonnay grown on this soil? I will describe it, I mean it's more than this soil I would say this terroir mm -hmm. because it's not, you can have the same soil but in the east let's say 700 meters of elevation and will be a completely different wine compared to this one. Mm -hmm. We are at 1500 meters of elevation, 5000 feet and it's a, it's a high mountain climber, so very cool, um, the grapes keep the acidity high uh, and there is an expression coming from this specific microclima in combination with this soil. Mm -hmm. So into this microclima, this soil we found um, that deliver um, some flower notes like mm, lavender, lavender yeah. mm -hmm. and very nice acidity. Uh, very fresh, very refreshing, the wine. Uh, you can age, I told you we started in 2003, but we didn't release the wine until 2009. 2009 was the first vintage. We were doing research and be sure that there is a correlation between the site mm -hmm. and the wine. So 2009 was the first vintage and the evolution of the wine is amazing. So um, I would say minerality, lavender, Um, I think a, a great age potential. Mm. It's amazing because here um, at the heights that we are, you've got a very different, much cooler climate to mm -hmm. other Chardonnays that we might try in, in lower Mendoza. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying that this normally is at the Winkler index at what level? This is in average is in region two. Mm. This particular year is in region one, like Burgundy or Champagne. Mm -hmm. So every year is between between one and two. In average, it's region two, like let's say Cote Roti or Barolo, um, or 
uh, Bordeaux. So usually it's in region two, but some years like this one mm -hmm. is region one. So very, very, in terms of heat and energy, it's very cool region. Mm -hmm. Super, fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And we're going to now walk to the vineyard and try your white yeah, stone. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> the s it's the same block, but in a different part. And I will explain you what happened there with the first layer and second layer that you will not see them there. So I will explain what happened. Thank you. No, you're welcome. <laughs> so we've hopped, skipped and jumped <laughs> to a couple, not, not too far. How far are we from the bones? I would say 80 meters. 80 meters. Yes. And here we've got a completely different soil type, which is where you find your white stones. Exactly. It's kind of obvious why you've called it white stones. Uh -huh. <laughs> but can you tell me a bit where these stones come from and why they're important for the character of the wine? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> here, the, this is a riverbed. So there was running water. Uh, maybe a couple of thousand years ago and this water removed the most superficial layers of mm -hmm. the soil so the sand and the limestone were removed and we found just the the stones and rocks so here you can see uh, many stones and rocks that are round mm -hmm. because it's alluvial right and they are covered with limestone is the reason they are they, are, they look white okay. um, in this soil, 95% of the volume are stones and rocks that cannot be explored by the roots. Mm -hmm. So just 5% can be explored and the plants can take water and nutrients just from 5% of the soil. So it's a very stressful condition for the plants. And there is a big difficulty to, to find, uh, uh, to develop uh, the, the vigor and the yield mm -hmm. in the vine. So usually it's a low vigor. Uh, low yield, small berries in all this area. So you can see here the roots, very, um, I mean, they have to turn around every stone, every row. They're uh, very twisted. I mean, they're exactly. growing, they're growing kind of out, down, around. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> around the stones. And it's, uh, well, this is the, the situation and the, the, um, the, the reality they have, they face in this particular mm -hmm. place. So it's, and we make a wine from this specific parcel called White Stones, Sardena Vineyard White Stones Chardonnay. Uh, it's one of our vinos de parcela. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and so this is another microvinification exactly. from this specific soil type. Exactly. We're talking about the same kind of terroir, really, if we're going to put it in context. Yeah. But the, the, main, the only difference yeah. between this bit and that bit is the, the stones soil. and the yeah, soil. The soil. The microclimate is the same. The, the only difference is the soil. We found also uh, a small effect in the temperature because if you see around this place is all covered with stones. Yeah, and so very they, white stones. Yeah, they get heated during the day uh -huh. and they deliver a little uh, temperature to the air. And it, they heat a little bit the air during the day. And do you find that the white, does that give more luminosity to underneath the also, vines as well? Yes. So here you will find a wine, uh, you will find the same minerality, but maybe uh, it's losing the um, uh, flavor of flowers, like mm -hmm. lavender that you tasted. Uh, instead of that, you will find a wine that is a little bit uh, bigger in the mouth, mm -hmm. you know, like the acidity is there, the minerality is there, but it's just that it's uh, a little bit wider in your mouth. More like Merceau, uh -huh. you know, like that style of Chardonnay. It's a bit more voluptuous. Exactly, exactly. We think that it's the heat from the stones mm -hmm. in the surface that get a little bit more ripeness to the fruit. Super. And so this, I mean, it's really, if you're talking about 5% of vineyards in the area that can actually reach enough water and get far enough down, this must be quite rare in the Yuko Valley, or is it something that we can find in different areas as well? You can find this type of soil in mm -hmm. different areas because there are another creeks, another yeah. riverbeds in this alluvial cone. But you cannot find the combination of altitude mm -hmm. and this type of soil. I mean, this is the only place, I would say, in the world that combines this particular soil and this microclimate. Mm -hmm. Super. 
And it's great to be able to taste it in these wines and, and show you a little bit about about this part of Adriana and this part of Guayca. Yeah, yeah. and also I think it's, it's good for Argentina that we can show to the world the, um, a different face of Chardonnay. I mean, it's a mountain climate, high elevation, cool climate. Uh, with this particular soil, we are delivering uh, a style of Chardonnay that people, the consumers, are um, appreciating mm -hmm. in a high level. Super. Mm -hmm. And do you think there's a lot of potential for Chardonnay and other white varieties here? Yes, yes. And it's something I, that we're going to see a bit more in the like future in from, the, in from the Argentina? Past, I would say 10, 15, 15 years ago, we couldn't imagine, we didn't imagine that we could be producing this uh, style of Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. you know? And maybe because the vineyard was uh, younger, this was planted in 1996. So it's, I think now it's, it's taking the maturity in the vineyard to, to express more and explore more with this. Over these years, the roots explore more the volume of the soil. And, and now they are really interacting with all the resources, you know, temperature, sunlight, and soil. I think uh, sometimes take time. I mean, it's not, you, you cannot achieve uh, the potential of the place in, in one, two, three years mm -hmm. sometimes need, need time. It's, it's wine, it's not Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. And when were these planted? Uh, this was planted in 1996. Uh, uh -huh. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we're already in, in that stage where we're producing really great wine and it's exciting to think about 10 years, 20 yeah. years more as well. Yeah, and sometimes I think all the mistakes we are making now. And maybe in 10, 15 years more, we will say, oh, remember when we were, <laughs> you know, and it's amazing. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a good moment to be in Argentina um, trying to produce a higher, higher quality. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> You're welcome.